Three rings for the elven kings under the sky. Seven for the dwarf lords in their halls of stone. Nine for mortal men doomed to die. One for the dark lord on his dark throne. In the land of Mordor where the shadows lie. One ring to rule them all. One ring to find them. One ring to bring them all and in the darkness bind them. In the land of Mordor where the shadows lie. Megalvon and friends, Yoiston here with another epic character history for you all today. In my opinion, this is one of the greatest villains of all time, and I've really been looking forward to making this video. Please enjoy. Known under many titles, such as the Nameless Enemy, the Lord of Gifts, and most infamously as the Lord of the Rings, Sauron was originally a Maya who served Aule the Smith, who was of the Valar. His original name was... Myron, meaning the Admirable. He wore this name during his time serving under Aule, learning much about the craft of forging. This craft would become useful in the construction of Barad-dûr and the One Ring. Sauron was the most powerful of the Maiar, even more powerful than Olorin and Kurumo, who would one day be known as Gandalf and Saruman. In his first days, Sauron was as Iluvatar had created him, good at heart and uncorrupted. However, Sauron was soon tainted by the original Dark Lord Melkor, before the First Age. After his corruption, Sauron remained falsely loyal to the Valar, and spied on the divine beings for his Dark Master, until Atumno and Engband were built, and Sauron openly declared himself a servant of Melkor. This is the way of things, as Tolkien wrote, quote, For nothing is evil in the beginning, even Sauron was not so. End quote. After his betrayal, the Noldor called him Sauron, meaning the Abhorred, while the Sindar called him Gorthor, meaning the Dread Abomination. He became the greatest lieutenant of Melkor, serving as Castellan of Angband during Melkor's reign in Atumno, and Sauron escaped the first destruction of that wicked place during the War of the Powers, when the Valar would seize Melkor for the first time. His infamy grew as the First Age began because Sauron directed the war against Feanor's elves during the War of the Jewels, while Melkor corrupted the newly awakened men. Eventually, Sauron established his own fortress after Melkor returned to Angband, on the elven island of Sirion, later named Tul in Golhoth, or the Island of the Werewolves. Sauron's power peaked during the First Age because he was able to shapeshift into both a werewolf and a vampire. It's definitely interesting to see how powerful Sauron was at this time, and how he lost this power throughout the ages. In my opinion, Sauron first takes the reins as a true villain in his own right, during the tale of Baron and Luthien. At this time, Melkor was the arch-nemesis of the Valar, Maiar, and the Elves, but I believe Sauron was always the main enemy of the race of men, and this is where that rivalry began. Before the man Baron met the elf Luthien, Sauron wanted to know the location of Barahir, one of Aragorn's ancestors, so that he could end the line of leaders in the House of Beor, which would cripple the race of men. And so, Sauron tortured Gorlim, one of Barahir's men, for the location of his leader. After Gorlim revealed Barahir, the band of men were killed, creating the first great tensions between men and Sauron. Baron, the son of Barahir who yet lived, sought revenge, and eventually came to the forest of Doriath where he met Luthien and began the quest for the Silmaril. During this quest, Baron and his allies were captured by Sauron before he and his companions could make it to Melkor's fortress of Angband, in order to steal one of Feanor's Silmarils. They were held on Sauron's island of werewolves, and Finrod, a king of the Noldorian elves, defended Baron to the last with songs and martial skills, before Luthien and the hound named Huon came and tore Sauron's castle asunder, freeing Baron. Luthien and Huon gave Sauron a massive defeat, killing all of his werewolves and even defeating the Dark Servant himself while he was in the shape of a werewolf. After this, Sauron fled to the forest of Tuor Nufuin in the appearance of a vampire. Sauron remained hidden during the First Age and the War of Wrath, as he likely avoided punishment from his master for such a defeat at the hands of Luthien. Near the end of the First Age, when Melkor was finally beaten and cast into the Void, Sauron, who was now without a master, surrendered to the host of the West but refused to face judgment in Valinor, 
So he fled to a land soon known as Mordor, where he built the Tower of Barad-dûr to stand against the Free Peoples in ages to come. Now, Sauron, as the only Dark Lord in Middle-earth, laid dormant as he established his new realm during the early parts of the Second Age. Like his master Melkor, Sauron desired to rule Middle-earth, or destroy it if he couldn't control it. The Dark Lord would attempt the former before resulting to the latter. First, Sauron corrupted the men of Harad and Rûn with delusions of power and wealth. Then he built armies of orcs and trolls if he needed to march on the elves, but first he would try to seduce the Eldar into his evil ways. So, in the year 1500 of the Second Age, Sauron shapeshifted again, but this time into a fair elven lord of the Vanyar, called Anatar, the Lord of Gifts. He came to Arigian and befriended the Noldor elves that lived there, including their leader Celebrimbor. Other Eldar, such as Galadriel, Elrond, and Gilgalad, did not trust this Anatar, but they took no open action against him yet. The elves that did trust him, however, were seduced by his teachings, and so they learned the art of ring crafting. With this knowledge, Celebrimbor crafted the three elven rings, untouched by Sauron's malice. Then, after the men, dwarves, and elves had their rings, Sauron crafted his ruling ring in Mount Doom, a volcano in Mordor, to rule the minds of the wearers of these rings. This was Sauron's plan. If he was able to get every leader of every race to wear one of his rings, he could dominate their minds and so control all peoples of Middle-earth. But this plan backfired. The elves sensed Anatar's treachery and immediately took their rings off to disable Sauron's power over their minds. As for the dwarves and their rings, they became greedy for wealth, but nothing more. Their inherent strength and power had saved them from Sauron. However, the nine men were corrupted, and they became the Nazgul and greatest of the Dark Lord's servants. Indeed, most men of Middle-earth had become servants of Sauron, and the men of the West who had created Gondor and Arnor still dwelt in Numenor. Because Sauron couldn't taint the elves, he declared war on them, and nearly conquered all of Middle-earth, killing the same elves that he had deceived years earlier, such as Celebrimbor, in the War of the Elves and Sauron. It wasn't until the men of the West intervened that Sauron was driven back. Under the King Tar Minister of Numenor, the men of that fair island came unto Middle-earth and pushed Sauron back to Mordor. This allowed the Dark Lord to grow in power over many centuries, and towards the later years in the Second Age, Melkor's servant once again re-emerged, calling himself the King of Men and the Lord of the Earth. These titles had offended the Numenorians, and so the great men of that island went once again to Mordor without any conflicts and imprisoned the Dark Lord easily, as their strength of arms was far superior to that of Sauron's forces. We must remember though, Sauron is a master deceiver and manipulator, so he used his imprisonment to his advantage and corrupted the kingdom of Numenor from within. The same king who had detained Sauron, King ar came to trust Sauron, who had assumed another fair guise as his greatest advisor. And so Sauron spread lies to the people of Numenor, telling them that his old master Melkor had the power to save men from that which they most feared, death. Indeed, these men who had longer lifespans than any normal human still feared their mortality. So, they gave in to Sauron's lies and constructed a temple to the original Dark Lord, and they worshipped him through human sacrifices. Eventually, Sauron convinced the men of Numenor to sail against the Valar in the west, but Eru Iluvatar, master of all, intervened, and he drowned Numenor and destroyed the followers of ar and Sauron. This was not the end of the Men of the West or Sauron, as Elendil and his loyal sons, who had not betrayed the Valar, were granted safe passage to Middle-earth, where they built Arnor and Gondor, the two kingdoms of men that would stand strongest against Sauron in the later years. Sauron's deceptions on Numenor came with a cost, however, and the Dark Lord drowned and lost his ability to shapeshift, so he was forced to assume his unfair guise for the rest of his years. Although Sauron's body was destroyed in the downfall of Numenor, his spirit was strong enough to bring the One Ring back to Mordor. Thus, he was able to revitalize his physical body. In the last years of the Second Age, Sauron learned that Elendil still lived, and as he despised him most out of all Numenorians, the Dark Lord waged war too soon, in hopes to crush Gondor and Arnor. 
But High King Gilgalad of the Elves, alongside High King Elendil, defeated Sauron in the War of the Last Alliance, after twelve years of planning and fighting. The Dark Lord was defeated on the slopes of Mount Doom when a Seeldor cut the One Ring from the hand of the Dark Lord. Thus, the Third Age came to be, and Sauron's events in this time are pretty well known, so I will quickly summarize them. It is speculated as to whether or not Sauron ever took a physical shape after the War of the Last Alliance. The Lord of the Rings movies portray him as a flaming eye atop Barad-dûr, but I don't think that's what Tolkien had in mind. Though Sauron did take a lidless eye as his symbol, I think Sauron took a physical form towards the end of the Third Age, but he remained within Barad-dûr, using the Ithil Stone to spy from the lands of Mordor. Because the One Ring remained, carried by a Sealdor, lost in the Anduin, and then found by Smeagol and passed on to the Baggins family, Sauron remained, and his spirit endured. After 1,000 years, Sauron began to re-establish himself once again. He created the stronghold of Dul Guldor in Mirkwood and he bade his time there, waiting for the perfect moment to strike with a new war. Around this time, the wizards were sent by the Valar into Middle-earth to keep watch against Sauron and advise the Free Peoples. The Nazgul began to reveal themselves in the year 1300, and suspicions began to arise concerning Sauron's return. In 2063 of the Third Age, Gandalf investigated Dol Guldor for any sign of Melkor's servant, but he found nothing, as Sauron fled to avoid being discovered too early in his plans. Sauron likely went to the Far East until 2460, when he would return to Dol Guldor, marking the end of the Watchful Peace. After his return to Dol Guldor, Sauron continued his preparations for the final war against the Free Peoples. Gandalf infiltrated Dol Guldor again in 2850, and finally discovered that Sauron had indeed returned. But the White Council waited until 2941 before they did anything about him, and by that time Sauron put up a weak fight against them, ready to return to Mordor and enact his final war. I think Sauron spent most of this age in Dol Guldor waiting for Arnor's downfall and the weakening of the Free Peoples, so that he would have almost no resistance in his domination. During this time he was also likely thinking about the One Ring and where it could possibly be. Thus, Sauron rebuilt his armies and Barad-dûr, while enslaving the men of the south and east. Sauron took the symbol of a lidless eye for his regime, and used this to spark fear in Middle-earth during the War of the Ring in the year 3018 to 3019 of the Third Age. Sauron had the strength of arms and tactics over the Free Peoples, and could have won the war through those, but his biggest weakness led to his final defeat. He underestimated the free peoples of Middle-earth, and he was far too confident in his own abilities and decisions that Aragorn, the future king of Arnor and Gondor, descended from Baron and Luthien, tricked the Dark Lord into his own defeat. The One Ring that remained in Middle-earth kept Sauron alive, and he had believed that no one had the willpower to destroy it, but he was wrong. His greatest enemies were two small folk of a far-off land. While Aragorn led his armies against all of Sauron's forces at the Battle of the Black Gate, the hobbits Frodo and Sam snuck into Mount Doom, and with the help of Gollum, or Smeagol as he was once known, they destroyed the One Ring. This vanquished the second and final Dark Lord of Tolkien's Legendarium, and Sauron's spirit was forever weakened, never to return to power again. It is likely that this final defeat sent Sauron into the void beyond the world, where his master, Lord Melkor, still resided. A new Age of Peace was brought into Middle-earth after the destruction of Sauron, and the Free Peoples would never again suffer such an enemy. Thank you all so much for watching, I hope you all enjoyed it. I have looked forward to making this video for a really long time, and it was definitely worth the wait. If you found this entertaining, please hit that like button and share this video with someone who you think might like it. If you'd like to talk to me more directly, please join us on Facebook and Twitter through the links in the description below, and subscribe to join the Men of the West and all of the Free Peoples today. The first song used in today's video was from a fan named David Wesley. I have left a link to his work in the description, so please check out his music, it's really quite incredible. Next weekend I will return with a theory on what if the One Ring went west during the War of the Rings, so that should be a fun one to end the year with. Please enjoy the holidays and take some time to be with friends and family. Thank you all so much for joining me on this adventure, until the next one my friends.